with all the attention on Arsenal being obviously pushing Manchester City for the title, I actually think that it's going to be Liverpool. I really do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if everything goes their way, because at the very least, they know what it takes. And we all know that it's going to be a, a tight squeeze, uh, wasn't it? That one point in the past. And you, you nearly have to be perfect. And Liverpool have not been perfect at all, which, which is what Mark said. And it's true. But just imagine if they get themselves going. I think they have the know-how, the knowledge, the experience. And in terms of squad, I look at them in Arsenal uh, and, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to say they're much, much better, but uh, slightly maybe. So so at the end of the day, you take the three points uh, because let's face it, I mean, th- this game is not a rivalry. I mean, we talk about it's a derby. Uh, that's, that's what it is. And not just because of statistics. I mean, it's a big club against a club that – is just happy not to be relegated, right? I mean, if you look at the last three or four years, you know, maybe a win here or there for Everton, okay. But, uh, Mark, I don't know. I, I, you know, I look at Sean Dyche, and I like him as a person. It makes me laugh. Maybe that's what it is. I like him at Burnley more than I like him here, I suppose. Although you got to give him time. But I, I take his coaching license away for, for those subs- substitutions at halftime. I, I really would. Okay, you're going down to 10 men. So, logically, you say, you know, you got to make changes. But... I just think that when you're Everton and you go into Anfield or in general, you know that Liverpool are going to score. You just know they're going to score. And then what What then? So taking both wingers out, I just don't get it. At that stage, you say to yourself, yeah, the usual is going to come eventually, which it did. And and so so I, I really don't understand the, the idea uh, with those two substitutions. I'm not saying that we're going to make a difference, but... I would have I would have kept at least one of them uh, because you know you're gonna have to do it on the break somehow. So I, I didn't get that at all. Augie, what do you think about Sean Dyche's substitutions then? Because I know you do follow Everton quite closely as well. No, I, I agree with that in the sense that you know it, it turned it into a kind of defense versus attack training drill. And you know, Liverpool have got Salah, they've got Shabostar, they got Yotta, they had Nunes to come on. They've got so much attacking talent that you just can't play for 45 minutes just backing up against your goal at Anfield, in front of the court, there's, there's, there's just no way. And you know that, you know, the amount of times that penalties are given at this ground and many of the big grounds, that it was going to happen. It, Liverpool had a claim for a penalty just before the actual penalty they were given. So it was just a, a reckless tactic by Dice. But it, in his defence, he's got such a limited squad and that isn't his fault because he inherited the squad last season when he came in in about February time. They didn't really spend any money this summer to bring anybody in. It's an awful squad, Everton. I mean, they, they really are probably look at as three worst teams than them in the Premier League this season, but they are an awful squad. Nothing like the club that, you know, Yanis is right. Everton are a big club. I think only only Arsenal, Liverpool and Man United have won more league titles than Everton. And the younger fans might not believe that, but Everton used to be a big club. But now it's it's probably the most one-sided derby in world football. I mean, even Espanyol get results against Barcelona more than Everton get against Liverpool. So it is just a, it's an annual three points for Liverpool at Anfield. So, and to play that way, and to play with any kind of pace on the counter attack, we were just inviting Liverpool on. And like Yana said, you just knew at some point Liverpool yeah. would score, and that's what happened. Yeah, and 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 not only that, but but on top of that, as you've mentioned, you know, I was just talking about Liverpool and you know the title aspirations in my view. But I mean, they weren't great, right? I mean, first shot on target, I don't know, 60th minute or only. Well, they only had one shot on target up until I don't know 60th minute. And and and, and let's be honest. I mean, if you look at that midfield, as good as it is in terms of engine room. And it's been tremendous in that aspect. I mean, there was nothing coming out of there in terms of creativity. Zero. Until Harvey Elliott kind of came in a little bit. But, you know, the three that started the game did their jobs in terms of grinding and winning the ball back. Uh, Liverpool looked great on the on the counterattack. But the, the sort of, uh, you know, the, the, the onslaught that we expected didn't come in the first 15, 20, 25 minutes. So that's why I just think with Everton, I think there was that opportunity, the lack of flow, the international break, the early game, whatever you want to put that to. I think for Everton, it's one of those games where you say to yourself, the outcome most likely is going to be the same. Why not try it? And I think today Liverpool weren't, there weren't any special, that's for sure. 